Hello, I'm Debs. This is Debs Made This. Welcome. This is Friday Sews. Action again, sorry. Um, today I was going to talk you through some of my sewing rebel rule breaking. Let me say thank you to Jen uh, for Friday Sews and the idea of exploring different makers around the world. Congratulations to Granny Jen. Uh, and I hope she's enjoyed some lovely time with her grandchild um, and I'll link to her channel down below. So this is just a bit of fun and I wanted to share with you some lessons learned from some of the risks that I've taken with some fabric pattern combos in the last month or so. Uh, I hope you're all alright and that you're enjoying this gentle build up to um, the holiday season. I love Advent, I love how it feels and the weather in the UK has just been glorious those crisp kind of frosty don't mm -hmm. had any snow um but just everything is just beautiful always i have been using the incorrect fabric to sew my makes um and obviously do not do this with very precious fabric do not do this unless you kind of prepare to try and fail and see and have a think about what aspects of the pattern you need to consider so i have been sewing stretch garments in jersey that only has mechanical stretching does not have elastane so therefore it has very poor recovery so the components of um the fabric this is a piece of cream cotton interlocked fabric that's come which is the most soft and beautiful organic fabric that's come from the organic textile company um what I've raved about at length before. And you can see that uh, parallel to the salvage, we've got a little bit of give and a going across rise. We've got quite a lot of give, so it's probably got, what, 40%, but just, can you see, it doesn't kind of come back to itself. Now it will come back with a wash, it'll come back to itself then, but um, yeah, it's, you just obviously have to be a bit careful. now. Why would you want to do that? And you'd want to do it because this is obviously a much more sustainable option because it only has cotton fibres in it. It doesn't have any elastane and it's got no polyester based or um, plastic based fibre in it at all. Um, but the other thing is it's incredibly soft. Um, there's a very clear chain where it comes from. So yes, all sorts of reasons why I wanted to try it and see. So I was after some basics and I've got two of the three of them here if I've got a picture of me in the third I will put it in so the um the first one that I made is a row and tee so I've made tons and tons of these it's a Megan Nielsen pattern it's one of my tried and trues um I often make it as a bodysuit now I could not use this fabric to make a bodysuit because as we saw it has mechanical stretch horizontally and it has no vertical stretch so a bodysuit would be a very bad plan so you kind of have to just be a little bit canny about what you're making done is to make the rowan in um, like a like a minimally stretchy fabric before. So I knew that it would be all right and I knew that actually it's got quite a wide neck so it would go over my head. So it's just thinking about that, how much does the neckband need to stretch um, and how much kind of give do I need across the body of the fabric. So we know it's got give but what it's going to do is over the course of the day the it's not going to have the recovery that a cotton spandex jersey has got. And you can see that from one of these. So the, that one doesn't show it very well. I was going to show you that the, the, the arms, the end of the arms back out. You can see it a bit better on the, on the, um, the hem. So what tends to happen is once it's stretched, it doesn't ping back in again in the same way that like a, one of the lovely art gallery jerseys would. Um, so that means that you've just got to be aware of that as a thing. Now, for me, it's not an issue. These are all going to be worn in winter under things, either under pinafores or dungarees or under jumpers. Um, so they're layering pieces and I want them because they feel really nice and soft against my skin. So there was a row in tee with long sleeves. There was this, which is a row in tee with the V-neck. Now, um, I've made a, something with a deep V-neck, what was that? A Vera, which is a free pattern. That's a super pattern. Um, I've made that with a v-neck in something that didn't have very much stretch and it worked beautifully so I kind of thought that this one would be fine and um, you just have got to be a little bit careful because the neckline is not so forgiven so it's not perfect perfect the neckline on that but I think it's 
it's fine and it does for me. Um, I didn't use the cover stitch, I kind of ummed and about using the cover stitch and in the end I just did a straight stitch to top stitch that neckline because it doesn't need to stretch. It's, you know, it's not going anywhere, is it? I've got a little head and it's of a good deep V. So that's like a long arm, full length rowan, although I take about this much out because I'm really got short waisted. And then the third thing I managed to get out, so this was out of two meters, I think, of um, this interlock was, um, I had to cut the back on the, um, in two pieces, but this is a short sleeved, Tilly and the buttons Agnes and that was just because I'd got a bit of fabric left over um, and again that's kind of been worn like a vest really it's just worn as a layering piece I think that's gone okay I got the piece of fabric that I wanted I got the tops that I wanted and actually I've worn them loads the only reason I've been worn in the last week is because I've been sitting in a pile ready to make the video and um, the other one that I made was the other toaster so whichever this one isn't this is the other one um, and uh, I crop it slightly um, uh, but still keep the little V at the side. And this is done in um, French Terry, which again um, is from the Organic Textile Company. It has no stretch, it only has give. But again, I know that I don't need any stretch for this fabric. So I think I sized up in this and I think I've made a medium. Certainly gave it more room across the chest and the back because that's normally where I need my space. Um, and I think I made a medium in the arm as well, just because I was aware it wasn't going to be able to kind of stretch and give. In the same way but I wear this over the top of the other it has a hello lovely label in it and um, because this is one of the fabric one of the patterns that is really difficult to tell the front from the back they're very very similar um, and that's been worn a load with my peppermint wide leg pants in navy now I did the same thing with the Merlin sweatshirt you can see there was a bit of a so the next one kind of emboldened I pressed on to making my lens sweater. So I haven't made this version of it before. This is a closet core pattern. Um, and I really like this. It makes me feel very happy. Um, and obviously you can see that I have um, made note of the fact that I was going to need to have stretch in the neck and I have used ribbing um, at the neck band and at the wrists. So it's coordinating ribbon. Um, I really like how this looks the colour block and I did the version with the little tie at the at the waist which I haven't done before now the only disadvantage of that I've got thread sorry um, but the only disadvantage of that is that the puppy dog really likes to chew on the little knot things at the end um, and that bit takes a lot longer to dry than the rest of it and I'm, there's no way I'm going to undo those before I wash it but um, yes that heavy rotation as well um, and just because it's kind of really easy to put on I feel really nice and it makes me feel happy that kind of contrasting colour so I thought I'd break some more rules so I made a bit of a boo-boo this was one that was kind of a forced hand I was ordering some fabrics from La Marzi, I think and instead of ordering a metre, I just put one in the box and ended up ordering half a metre. So I had half a metre, a beautiful art gallery jersey arrived. Now, I can't remember what it's called, this one, but you'll know it. Everybody has seen this one sitting about. And I thought, well, what can I do? What am I going to do? Am I going to get some more? Shall I? And then have to pay like a load of postage or shall I just make pants out of it? Shall I just let it sit in my stash and use it for lining something? And then I thought, you know, I can get um, an itch to stitch Lego tank, I think it's called. So it's their free pattern. I have snudged it in a little bit because it's fairly loose fitting. Um, it has bound armholes and a neck and it, um, yeah, that's it. It's a vest top. It's hugely comfortable. And, and I am absolutely delighted. So I cut this on the cross grain because that was the only way I was going to get out because actually my 50 centimetres more like about 46 centimetres. Um, but you can see, so the stretch that I've got around the body is loads, but I've also got quite a lot the other way. So actually, I think the direction of greatest stretch on this fabric was actually on the cross grain, as it sometimes is. So I, yeah, I was naughty. I didn't cut the fabric according to my... Um, grain line in my pattern I cut it crosswise but that's been perfect and that um, has been washing and wearing beautifully. The next one is a self-imposed rule so my rule is that I don't buy or make things with polyester fabric um, and I do break it occasionally normally if there's I think I've got a Lady McElroy Moroccan crepe 
um, that I made of Pauline and Alice Ibby dressing. I'll put a tag to that if I can remember. Um, I love that dress. I love the fabric, but I do feel very guilty every time I realise what it's made of. So I had got in my stash already um, some polyester twill, so I shall show you. And I have made it into um, the Closet Core Mitchell trousers. Um, now, so obviously I, you know, I'm a child of the 70s, that's probably what I take events polyester for, is, is for a reason, but the other reason is it's not nice to sew with, it isn't, it doesn't behave itself. Trying to get those pleats to behave themselves was an absolute nightmare. My welts, I mean bear in mind, I think I've probably done one previous welt ever, I think. Maybe I haven't ever done a previous one. Anyway, so you can see that they are untidy. I mean, they're not horrendous. And, a, you know, a man on a galloping horse is not going to stop and go look at the state of Deborah's well pockets. Um, and it is only my 12. But I just, you cannot get this this fabric to stay. You know, if I was doing this in a wall, it would have just stayed where it was. But mainly, I am not going to twirl my Mitchells in a wall. Um, I have worn these once. Which doesn't bode well, really, does it? Um, they uh, made the narrow leg, which was probably, which seemed like a sensible idea for me because I thought if I can wear those out and about. Um, but I'm not sure about the ties at the waist. I'm not sure. So I think what I'm going to do is with the check suiting from Higgs and Higgs from the Knitting and Stitching Show, I'm going to make the wide legs lots of these but with and without the ties so I'm still going to have the pleat obviously um because that pleat into the pocket is a really nice that's a nice detail I like that a lot but um yeah the thing I managed to do look at that I managed to make a hole in them um and do you know why that was that was because I had six goes I think in certain this flight now I have no idea what I was doing as far as I could tell I was following the instructions but I could not get this to work um, I've subsequently sewn a pair of peppermint wide leg pants and they have fly and that went in without issue. So it's obviously just something about my interpretation of the instructions for this fly. And closet core instructions are normally spot on. So I don't know, maybe my brain was having a whoopsie, but I could not, I could not fathom it. I ended up all over the place with it. Um, and I got there in the end, but only because I followed a different tutorial, I found something else that I'd followed before and just used that. Um, yes, so sewing with polyester, um, a, a sweaty polyester non-pressy twill is not something I will go for again, so lesson learned there, I think. Right, what else have I been up to? Oh, I've been um, sewing a prototype, I shall show you that, and um, as you can see, dog walking has been featuring. I'm going to put in a really nice picture here of um, our dog walk at the weekend, which was beautiful um i have been using a backpack whose name i can't remember which is like an over the shoulder over one shoulder which is me made but it's but it's ancient now it's probably about five years four or five years old and it's starting to look really tatty and it was one of the first bags that i ever made so i went on the hunt to try and find something so basically i need something just to put in a long lead for now because he's still a puppy treats and poo bags um and sometimes my gloves need to go in there but not very often at the moment normally they need to be on my hands so this is the fiber mood etta um and it is just like an old school bum bag or a banana bag they quite like to call it it's got a clip and some webbing as its strap with no fastenings there it just goes directly on and the change that i made and it has a flap over a zip and the change that i made was to add um, a lining so I lined it um, and ju I just did that by making a second version and stitching it to the inside at the um, at the zip and that seems to have worked really well um, so I have in my head a couple more of these I'm going to try and make one out of this beautiful waterproof fabric that um, came from So Sanctuary which is just gorgeous um, I'll probably do this on the outside and then I've got some um, grey black nylon waterproof that I could put on the inside I could use that Liberty waterproof but I think I'll hold on to that um and then I also have some grey leather so I'm thinking I might make a grey leather one I mean plainly I don't need all of these but I just 
kind of got some ideas in my head about it. So um, they may end up being gifted to people because I've got quite a lot of dog walkers in our family and I think if I can get the poo bag dispenser thing sorted, I'm onto a good thing. Um, I think that's all I've got to show you for now. I was going to do a proper um, November, December, whatever makes, but um, I'm not sure if I'll get a chance to. And um, most of the things I'm making are not revolutionary. Oh, although I do have a couple of things in the pipeline that might be, but um, we'll see. So I hope you are enjoying this gentle run up to Advent. Oh, I tell you what, there was one more thing I was going to show you. Hang on. I was going to show you a couple. I thought I'd show you a couple of my favourite um, calendars. So I was going to do Vlogmas and I just, there is just not enough time and energy in this house at the moment to make that thing. Um, if I've got spare energy, I think I need to spend it sewing and creating rather than filming and editing. Editing is just... So I thought I'd show you a couple of my favourite ones. So, um, there won't be any spoilers unless you've done your, if, so pause here, if you've done your calendar the other way around. So they did this thing where you're supposed to start at 24 this time and a lot of people didn't. They started at 1. It did say on it that you were supposed to start at 21. But there have been um, a couple of kind of sweet ones. So there's this one which is made with love and coffee, which I thought was nice. I liked Pedal to the Metal. And I love to sew. So there's been, yeah, there's been lots of really lovely ones. If you want to see more of them, I'm quite happy to show you my very favourite at the end of it all. Um, but I really, mine came from Bourne, which is a fabric um, company in Glasgow. And I'm hoping if I get to Scotland over the festive period, I'll be able to go and visit there if it's a day when it's open. So that's me. I hope that you are finding a bit of time to breathe in this busy time. And, you know, from one old woman sitting behind a camera, it isn't about the stuff, it's about spending a bit of time, having a bit of peace, enjoying people's love and making the most of the time that we've got together. Uh, and I hope you are finding time to rest and replenish uh, and a bit of time to make. So that'll do me for now. Thank you to everybody who's liked and subscribed and commented, you're all treasures. Um, and I'll be back at some point in the near future. Bye bye for now. wearing beautifully this one is a self-imposed rule so my rule is that I don't buy or make things with polyester fabric um and I do break it occasionally normally if there's I think I've got a Lady McElroy Moroccan crepe um that I made a Pauline Alice Ibby dress in I'll put a tag to that if I can remember um I love that dress, I love the fabric, but I do feel very guilty every time I realise what it's made of. So I had got in my stash already um, some polyester twill, so I shall show you. And I have made it into um, the Closet Core Mitchell Trousers. Um, now, so obviously I, you know, I'm a child of the 70s, that's probably what I take events polyester for, is, is for a reason, but the other reason is it's not nice to sew with. It isn't. It doesn't behave itself. Trying to get those pleats to behave themselves was an absolute nightmare. My welts, I mean, bear in mind, I think I've probably done one previous welt ever. I think. Maybe I haven't ever done a previous welt. Anyway, so you can see that they are untidy. I mean, they're not horrendous. And, a, you know, a man on a galloping horse is not going to stop and go look at the state of Deborah's welt pockets. Um, and it is only my 12, but I just, you cannot get this this fabric to stay. You know, if I was doing this in a wall, it would have just stayed where it was. But mainly, I am not going to twirl my Mitchells in a wall. Um, I have worn these once, which doesn't bode well, really, does it? Um, they I made the narrow leg, which was probably, which seemed like a sensible idea for me, because I thought if I can wear those out and about, um, but I'm not sure about 
the ties at the waist. So I think what I'm going to do is with the check suiting from Higgs and Higgs from the Knitting and Stitching Show, I'm going to make the wide legs lots of these, but with and without the ties. So I'm still going to have the pleat, obviously, because um, that pleat into the pocket is a really nice. That's a nice detail. I like that a lot. But um, yeah, the thing I managed to do. Look at that. I managed to make a hole in them. Um, and do you know why that was? That was because I had six goes, I think, inserting this flight. Now, I have no idea what I was doing. As far as I could tell, I was following the instructions, but I could not get this to work. Um, I've subsequently sewn a pair of peppermint wide leg pants and they have a fly and that went in without issue. So it's obviously just something about my interpretation of the instructions for this fly. And closet court instructions are normally spot on, so I don't know, maybe my brain was having a whoopsie, but I could not, I could not fathom it. I ended up all over the place with it. Um, and I got there in the end, but only because I followed a different tutorial, I found something else that I'd followed before and just used that. Um, yes, so sewing with polyester, um, a, a sweaty polyester non-pressy twill is not something I will go for again. So lesson learned there, I think. Right, what else I've been up to? Oh, I've been um, sewing a prototype, I'll show you that. And um as you can see dog walking has been featured using a backpack whose name i can't remember which is like an over the shoulder over one shoulder which is me made but it's but it's, it's starting to look really tatty and it was one of the first bags that i ever made so i went on the hunt to try and find something so basically i need something just to put in a long lead for now because it's still a puppy treats and poo bags um and sometimes my gloves need to go in there, but not very often at the moment. Normally they need to be on my hands. So this is the Fibre Mood Etta. Um, and it is just like an old school bum bag or a banana bag, they quite like to call it. It's got a clip and some webbing as its strap with no fastenings there. It just goes directly on. And the change that I made, and it has a flap over a zip. And the change that I made was to add... Um, a line so I lined it um, and ju I just did that by making a second version and stitching it to the inside at the um, at the zip and that seems to have worked really well um, so I have in my head a couple more of these I'm going to try and make one out of this beautiful waterproof fabric that um, came from So Sanctuary which is just gorgeous um, I'll probably do this on the outside and then I've got some um, grey black nylon waterproof that I could put on the inside I could use that Liberty waterproof but I think I'll hold on to that um and then I also have some grey leather so I'm thinking I might make a grey leather one I mean plainly I don't need all of these but I just I've kind of got some ideas in my head about it so um they may end up being gifted to people because I've got quite a lot of dog walkers in our family and I think if I can get the poo bag dispenser thing sorted I'm onto a good thing um, I think that's all I've got to show you for now. I was going to do a proper um, November, December, whatever makes, but um, I'm not sure if I'll get a chance to. And um, most of the things I'm making are not revolutionary. Oh, although I do have a couple of things in the pipeline that might be, but um, we'll see. So I hope you are enjoying this gentle run up to Advent. Oh, I'll tell you what, there was one more thing. I thought I'd show you a couple of my favourite... Um, calendars so I was gonna do vlogmas and I just there is just not enough time and energy in this house at the moment to make that thing um if I've got spare energy I think I need to spend it sewing and creating rather than filming and editing editing is just so I thought I'd show you a couple of my favorite ones so um there won't be any spoilers unless you've done your if, so pause here if you've done your calendar the other way around so they did this thing where you're supposed to start at 24 this time and a lot of people didn't. They started at 1. It did say on it that you were supposed to start at 21. But there have been um, a couple of kind of sweet ones. So there's this one which is made with love and coffee, which I thought was nice. I liked Pedal to the Metal. And... I love to sew. So there's been, yeah, there's been lots of really lovely ones. If you want to see more of them, I'm quite happy to show you my very favourite at the end of it all. Um, but I really, mine came from Born, which is a fabric um, 
company in Glasgow and I'm hoping that if I get to Scotland over the festive period I'll be able to go and visit there if it's a day when it's open. So that's me, I hope that you are finding a bit of time to breathe in this busy time and you know from one old woman sitting behind a camera it isn't about the stuff, it's about spending a bit of time, having a bit of peace, enjoying people's love and making the most of the time that we've got together. Uh, and I hope you are finding time to rest and replenish uh, and a bit of time to make. So that'll do me for now. Thank you to everybody who's liked and subscribed and commented. You're all treasures. Um, and I'll be back at some point in the near future. <laughs>